have a copy. So we could have our names on that list because to this day nobody in the community has gotten any information from USC or from councilman's office. Second of all, um, I keep asking, I want to know the value of the property, the value of the land that they're trying to take. Their project's going to cost them $230 million. That's a lot of money. $230. I was thinking it was like $5 million. Anyways, if they were to give us just 1% of those 230 we can have $2.3 to give back to our part. We can have a brand new gym, state of the art. I mean, Shaq has a beautiful, beautiful gym in his house, and it cost him $473,000. We need to have a gym like Shaq as well. You know, if you guys really want our community to uh, have a hold of this project. Another thing is that I'm also asking the councilman's office, and I asked them today to give us all the information we need in order to register our park as a historical landmark. So we're 102 years old. It was uh, promised by Vian Regosa in 2009. In June 11, 2009, we have to go to the province after he did this million tree uh, march. He has a stone on the other side of the park that's dedicated to him. He promised to get to restore the wetlands. We have to go to God. It's been five years. It's long overdue. Now we vote for Weezer. We vote for Garcetti. They need to show up, and um, we need to have transparency. And we just need to keep fighting for our part. Thank you. Carlos Montes, Rosario Munoz, Mr. Art Pulido, and Mr. Gustavo Ortiz. Good evening, everybody, and friends. I see a lot of friends here tonight. My name is Scott Johnson. This is Art is with my home, growing up here in Ramon, growing up in Ramon, Art, walking over here. So forth, but right off the bat, let me take the time to mention three people who are not here today that will be looking down from above and approving of our efforts to preserve this beautiful location. Ray Watson, former director, Alex Mann, environmental activist, and more about him to work in the community over here, and South Castro. for now. Council, I chair the Transportation and the Environment Committee, right? 
and we already voted at the subcommittee level to oppose the North Fork extension. Thank you. After we heard the presentation from USC and had the community come to our committee meetings, right? Then we took it to the, now we're taking it to the general board, the, the All High State Road Council. at the Ball Heights Senior Center. So you can hear, we can hear your input, put it on the record, and have us vote officially at the Neighborhood Council of Ball Heights against the North Fork Extension. And then we can take that up as a community impact statement to the City of LA to Jose Wissan. Because if that is not right, it's not going to end here. We're just here, you know, I believe the USC is not a good neighbor, right? The solution is for them to expand Alcazar. They own both the north and southeast the west corners of Alcazar. They can expand it to have more lanes coming in. If we, if we, if we, we will not lose this park because once you lose green spaces for life, right? More traffic will cause more pollution. We know that Ball Heights is the number one to pollute uh, parts of the city of LA. Wilmington is the other one. And you know why Wilmington is polluted? So we have enough traffic, enough pollution, enough noise. Ball Heights, let's say no to the North Fork extension of the street. They are part. Thank you very much. Forty years ago, I was working on community complaints against uh, urban renewal, Chicano removal, poor people removal in the Northeast Master Plan, and we got stopped for 20, 30 years. But who knows what's going to happen next? But one of the things I, I, I think we have to be clear when we're dealing with these issues, you know, is who's accountable to us and who isn't. When uh, um, Mrs. Escuchia says she'll take our advice and then she'll take it to the board of to the higher ups. Well, eventually it's the board of trustees of USC, and we don't vote for the board of trustees at USC. There is an accountability there. We do vote for our elected representatives, and I think we've got to make sure of that. Um, uh, I was asked, I wanted to know, they said that the master, the city general plan, or they used to call them master plans, is where the street uh, vacation or whatever it is, the street extension they're going to do, and they said it's part of that plan. But usually those plans, the general plan for the city is made up of neighborhood plans, which we, nobody can answer. What neighborhood plan is this extension in? And then I did talk with the representatives of Wizar, his chief of staff, and he says it's not a bygone conclusion. It's not uh, totally in the hands of USC. That the city has to sign off and has to go through all of its processes uh, to do to make the decision to extend the park and all of those kinds of things. So I think we need to keep that uh, well in mind that it's really the city that has that kind of responsibility. And I think the people that are saying, we need to hear from the councilman and talk with him, we need to hear him be part of that and not let uh, this kind of hearing, which is fine to discuss ideas, but it's not part of the official due process for the city to make that decision. And so we should make sure that this goes into the due process with our elected government to deal with the issues. Gustavo 
Uh, I used to live uh, right across the street from the park on Chelsea, right by the uh, 10 freeway exit. So I'd hear the ambulance every night, and I wish it would stop. And I'm wondering if that ambulance is going to come through Norfolk. But let me say something. I'm also a USC graduate with uh, an educational doctorate, but my roots are here. We talk about the SC family, the SC family, but I'm more of a, of a hazard park of family. And, uh, let me say that I'm here today to tell you that Hazard Park, to many of us, it is a, a treasure, and this man is responsible for a lot of wonderful things. That's for Ray Walker. Ray Walker was a uh, park director here for 30 years, served the city of LA, talking about his mission. And the sad part for me is that what hits my heart is that this man, when my parents couldn't afford the trophy, the uniform, or the pictures, this man stepped up and got sponsorship. He used to bring UFC players here to the gym, Ricky Irvins. And, I, and some of us, um, Dodger and Allison, some of us here, started a petition. We got about 500 signatures, took it to Weezer's office saying, rename the park. Well, we couldn't rename the park. It said, well, rename the gym. It said, take it to the city of Parks and Rec. We got the runaround. And I think that's what this community is, is facing. I heard the pattern of us not being heard. But USC comes in with millions, and now we have an open street. So I would think, if this Norfolk street needs to be extended, I think we should call it Ray Wantaway. And it should be a little bit further uh, north. So curve it over to the left, and I think we can find some compromise there. But we've been talking, and I, I do believe I know. Thank you. Thank you to you, too. Um, we just need to be heard. We need some compromise. I believe we need some, some goods for our children still in the community. Give the kids a Santa Cita, make them family, uh, part of the USA family of schools. Give them instruments. Give us our kids that can't afford their uniforms. Give, them some, give us something here. It shouldn't just be manifest destiny all over again. Mm, yeah, man. Right. 
I built an AIDS monument, it was very difficult because people opposed us. And we kept our focus and we worked with the community and we addressed those concerns. And we today built the only publicly funded monuments in the country. And so it can be done, but you have to have communication, you have to trust, you need to listen, and you need to participate with your ideas and your suggestions. So I ask you as, you, as we end tonight and we walk away, that don't look to the person to your left or to your right as someone who's opposing you, but look to them as a friend. And let's move forward and have some conversations and at the end of the day, we will compromise, not because it's in your interest, but it's in the interest of the community. Thank you. Our friend Richard that just spoke worked for a good cause, one that listened to the people. Unfortunately, and I hate to say this, because we've had a number of Mexicans in there, and in my estimation, in my opinion, none of them are worth a damn, including that little run that they just got rid of at City Hall. <laughs> I once asked him a question, an honest answer, I expected, which was really a, a, a fair question, nothing that it, it was insulting or anything. He looked at me, and instead of saying, I don't know, I can't answer that, he called me a curmudgeon. If none of you don't know what a curmudgeon is, that's a hellraiser. That's why he addressed me. That's why I have no respect for these people. I hope that, uh, speaking to the field deputy, uh, Mr. Wizard, I pointed out a few things about what can happen here. Going back to Mrs. Uh, our lady over there in the corner, I forgot, Escocia, uh, she said that uh, if they cut this street through here, it wouldn't affect the park, the, the baseball diamonds at all. I don't know where in the heck she got that information. I want to speak. I want to speak. And it wouldn't affect the, it wouldn't affect the diamonds. If they cut the white street up here, what's going to happen to this little narrow one? They're going to want to widen it. Are they going to widen it to their side, to the north side, or are they going to widen it to the park side? There's no question about which way they want to go. And I brought this to the attention of the councilman's uh, field deputy earlier today. So rest assured, they're not doing us any favors here. And if these people think that they're going to get away with it, we had a couple of attorneys from this area. We can always talk to them. File an injunction to stop them. If they want to fight, if they want to go out, let them go out the other way. They said that they were going to eventually cut that way. Let them go that way. Don't leave the park alone. I came here with Ray Watt in 1972, and I've heard the comments about wanting to name something in honor of him. Rest assured, I came here in 72 with him because he asked me to come here and coach. I coached football, and I coached football, uh, baseball, managing the first senior team that ever won here. Of course, I had some tremendous coaches with me. This part means a hell of a lot to me. Although, I live across the street there, across Valley Boulevard in Gillside Village. But I'm very much attached to this, and I don't want to see this park cut up in any same way. And I hope that this community rises up and puts a stop to this.
But my name is uh, Lawrence Mario, Midwell Kelton. I think I'm the best part. We all know everybody in here. We all know each other. Um, I can remember my mom used to tell us, crossing Solo Street, crossing the light, don't run across the street. We were asking for a light. I got a light. That's about how many years. Unless he was our friend, they might have known us about the hand. Um, they talked about entrances, they want to make a new entrance. I don't know if Jesse recalls what happened back in the Was it in the late 80s and early 90s when there was a shooting at the hospital? What did they do? They closed all the entrances down off of Solo Street, off of Marango, off of Playground. It must have been about five, six, seven entrances into Jesse's hospital. All of a sudden, there was one. So now you all know what another entrance in here. There's a lot of children that come. You see these little guys playing football out here. There's a lot of little kids. I want to come to this park safe. They don't want to have to cross another street. Accidents do happen. Of course, we don't want things like that to happen. Also, I know we touched on the parking issue. Um, I think that we should, we should be giving more parking for our people to park. Whoever signs a roster, their parents, their children and parents should get a permit to park. I think that was brought up, but I'm saying that's what I mean. What happened? Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Martina Hernandez, and I grew up in City Terrace. And I live here. I'm sorry, but I live here in El Sorino now, and I like living in El Sorino now. Um, I'd like to be here for 25 or 30 years, but apparently, so in UFC. Once they take a little bit. They want more. They're like junkies. And they got the money to pay for their habit. They got tons of money. And they'll spread it around here and there to folks with very good projects. And hopefully they will do those projects and, and keep those projects going. But please, think about the future. Years ago I was up in Harlem, one of the most vibrant black communities in the, in the, in the country. And little by little, as the people, the property values went up, the people that lived there couldn't afford to stay there. Gentrification, the Starbucks, the everything. I like coffee like everybody else. But we want our own community businesses to grow. They want to put a Starbucks in this hotel, and for all these, more than likely, students that aren't going to be coming from this community, they're going to be coming from out of state, which is fine, I guess. But they're going to be taking advantage of our neighborhood, where we live. And all of that the gentleman said before, when they come with their projects, when they built a market down in South LA, when they built a rouse down in South LA, it wasn't for the community of South LA, it was for the community of USC. When they start building little shops for the students that are going to be staying at those schools, it's not going to be for our community, it's going to be for the folks that are over there. Whenever these companies, big huge organizations come down and say, I got a deal for you, well they got a better deal going on. So I think people watch out what's going on, keep, out, keep talking to each other, spread the word. We gotta pay attention to what's happening because again, 25 or 30 years they say they're gonna keep that footprint and that property that they're over there. Of course they're gonna wanna buy more. Yeah, I gotta watch you too, so. I got, all my time's up actually. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much.
you know, I'm running and I am, however far I go, you know, I'm always going to represent Hansa Park.
with telling us that you've been in the community for 100 years plus, and I ask myself, well, you've been in the community for 100 years, why has it taken you so long to recognize that we are here as a community?